Okay, this is an introductory tutorial for those new users who want to work within the game engine I have set up here, because normally when you come into Blender, it's set to Blender Render. I switch it over to Blender Game. And the cool thing about the game engine, it's really a physics engine. It's bullet physics incorporated within Blender, and bullet physics is super powerful, and it's used within a lot of other 3D environments. But when you first start using it within Blender, it can seem completely crazy. I mean, it just doesn't seem to work right, doesn't look right the whole nine yards. So this is a simple little test. I'll just press P to start the game engine up. I'm going to press A here. I'm going to show you some of the problems you run into. There's, there's, there's little errors that go on here. So I'm going to address this in a second. But before we do, I'm just going to start from scratch. All right, I'm going to just load the... Uh, get a new scene in Blender just how you would normally see it and I'm going to show you the problems that you're going to run into so first thing I'll do is I'm going to switch over to the game engine and I'm going to just change this cube I'll right click on it make sure it's selected I'll scale it on Y I'll press S Y I'll scale it here I'll scale it on Z S Z and there have there's that flat plane like that and then I'm going to leave that there for a second and then I'm going to press shift A and add a plane underneath it I'm going to press S and scale it up like this. I'm going to right click this rectangle shape and I'm going to just give it a color to just help distinguish it from the ground and I'll give this a color too as well. Alright so there we have a couple of objects in the scene like this. Alright so but if I just press P right now which starts the game engine it kind of does that nothing happens so let's see if we can make something happen to this object let's raise this one up in the scene and let's go over here to this last tab physics tab and we'll change this static over to rigid body now when I press P it kind of falls down let's see if we can look at it from here P and it falls but it doesn't hit the ground well, you notice the reason being is that it's this circle around here. This circle is telling you the boundaries of this object, right? And you can change this a couple of ways to do it. Right over here is this radius. If I change this down, you can see that circle changes. Well, let me drop it way down and I press P and then it actually goes through, but it goes to the surface. That, that kind of works, but it's not quite right. If I make it much bigger like this, it just kind of elevates it like that. So I'll just leave it back to I'll just put it back to 1 for the set for the moment like this. Well, so down here you have this collision bounds box. If you press that by default it shows as a box. Well, that works okay for this. Now when I press P, it bounces to the ground, but it's kind of hard to tell if it's actually hitting the ground or not. One of the ways is this thing is if you get this above the grid, then the grid goes away, but it's still hard to see. And the only real way you can really see it if you add shadows and light to the scene. So we're going to do that as well. Alright, so um, one, of the, one of the lights that casts a light is a uh, spotlight. So I'm going to click up here, I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to add a lamp, I'm going to add a spot lamp like this. I'm going to press R, R. I've just pressed R twice, that way I can rotate it on multiple axes. And I said it casts a spot, but you don't really see any sh light or shadow being cast over this object even though it's pointed on top of it like that but that's because when you start up Blender it defaults to this mode right here solid mode in order to be able to see the lights one thing you have to do you have to be in texture mode and now you can see the actual the effect of the light so it makes the scene look nicer to work with in the first place this is, is a little bit too shiny for me so I'm going to right click on that go into the material tab I'm going to turn down the specularity right here like this but I still don't see a shadow even though I change it over to texture mode and the other thing you have to do is you have to change it to a different type of lighting so I'm going to press N bring up the properties window come down here to this display tab come down here to where it says multi texture I'm going to change this to GLSL and then what I do suddenly I have a, the shadows and the light associated with like this so that makes it a lot easier for me to see what's going on in fact I'll grab this light and I'll just move it say a little bit over here and I'll rotate it on X by RX so now it, whoops whoa I want that spot to be a little bit bigger so I can change it here to see this like this alright so get rid of these windows N and T now when I come in here and press P you can see that it falls to the ground and I actually have I can you know get a sense of what actually is going on because of the shadow and that in and of itself helps a huge amount so you can kind of get oriented 
to the system like that. All right, and then we're going to add one more thing like we had in the previous video when I first started. Shift A, I'll add a cube to the scene. All right, and I'll scale it down a little bit with S, and I'm going to scale it up with Z. Whoops, I press Z, that changes my lighting state. If I press Z, to get Z again, it goes back into solid mode, or Alt Z goes into texture mode. So I'm going to move this up like this, so it's just maybe above the surface. And the same thing, I'm going to give this, turn this into a rigid body as well. I'm going to press P and let it run and you can see it goes down and goes through here. Well you could do a little trick. There's other ways you could turn this into a collision bound thing like that and then it stays there. But other ways you can do it for the future, if, even if I don't have any collision bounds, you could actually go into edit mode with this object and move the whole thing up. So you see that origin point, the little dot there. Now leave edit mode now. Now the origin of the object is down there at the bottom. So then when I actually press P and do it, it actually, let's see if we can see it from the side a little bit better. Well, that's not still not quite the same, but that's one way you can kind of trick it as well from doing things. So these are all little things. The lighting is probably the most crucial and these bounding boxes. A uh, box works good for boxes, but it doesn't work good for other things. Now that's staying there elevated because I moved my origin so I could actually move my origin back to the center to fix that. But I think that kind of gives you an idea. That'll really help get you started because it's a powerful engine. I mean, they call it the game engine, but I like to think of it as a physics engine. And it has a lot more power than uh, you might think. You know, just by calling it a game engine to me doesn't really give it enough credibility for what it really is. And you'll be able to see a lot more in a lot of my future tutorials. Okay, well, that's it for now. Hope that helps you get started with your own projects. And I'll see you in the next video.